world, I'm just here to make you think. This CEO, Philly Trenches Hockey Raw, coming at you live and direct. You heard? And I know I've been going for a couple of days. I had to handle some personal business. You feel me? And get some rest. You feel me? But I'm back with a special video about my homie Dex that I told y'all about that was my cellular greatest for. Now, this video is exclusive because it's really based on a story, a book, alleged book called Alibi. Now, my cousin is Terry Woods, the road true to the game, you know, and also is a book called Alibi that she wrote that is allegedly about my homie's Dex that's doing life plus 40 years with the feds, right? Now, after receiving a phone call from Ago from Erie Avenue, like I told you, people call me from upstate. They call me from the feds. And these are individuals who have 32 years in prison, 31 years in prison, 30 years in prison. They've been locked up a long time. And while they was incarcerated, I was doing time with them. I was incarcerated with them. But what I didn't know was the reason I actually knew, but I didn't know. Because I was, you know, I just knew who told on Dex. But somebody showed him to me who I was with, you know. And one of them was the person I was with, cousin. This is the one that was, you know, the head member of the JVM behind the scenes. I'm rolling with him. This was Dex OG, who spent all that lawyer money on him but couldn't get him out of jail, right? And it so happens that Terry Woods allegedly supposed to have been with him when this thing went down. But they said, you know, something went left. So he wound up getting all this time. But if you ever read the book, Elaba, I never read it. I just uh, read, like, what it's about. But the person I'm talking about from up Germantown, he's the same individuals in 1989 when I was 16 on 15th and Diamond when we went to war against all these dudes. And Dex was one of them. But I didn't see his face at first because, you know, we won. And then after everything subsided and the beef was over and my team teamed up with them when I was booked, I ran into Dex over Holmesbury in 91 when me and Twine was sellies. Now, when me and Twine was sellies, Dex used to come to Twine cell. Or he's, or he's come to our cell. Or he used to come to the window because right outside our window was the yard. And they used to work out all the time together. Twine and Dex before I came up there. So now Dex, like, yeah, since your man came, Twine, you don't even work out with me no more and all that. But what Twine didn't know because Twine wasn't there when we was in the middle of that war. Twine was on the other side of Broad Street. That's when I get let Twine hold my, my Porsche design glasses that Pookie gave me. Anyway, when you're over Holmes Burning Greatest Four, you're going to run into who's who and you might team up with them. So when I was on the phone with Ago and he started explaining to me about the book Alibi and how it was based on Dex and how Dex paperwork got that in there. Got JVM in there and all that, right? Now, like I told you, when I first met Dex, I didn't know who he was because when we went to war with him, they all had them long rabbit hats on. You know them hats that they wear? It was like a rabbit hat with them, all that fur on it, and them things come down, they had all them on, like disguises, so you couldn't see their faces. When they jumped off, we was up, you know, with Germantown and area where the Max is at, the cheese steak place I always show y'all. Right across the street, y'all see where um, they got Kevin Hart mural at? When Erie Avenue, right across the street is Park Avenue, the hundred that I used to live in. Now, they jumped out of a pickup truck. A pickup truck, and all these dudes is on the back of this pickup truck, just the wintertime. And they jumped off the pickup truck, and they came up inside the Eagles to meet up. Main man who was behind the scene, since he was the main, main man, he inside the bar 
talking to little Donnie that's, that's doing life that he took off that road. They ain't talking. You know what I mean? But they both, you know, got that thing on or whatever. Me and Joe and they were forks and knives. But we did. You feel what I'm saying? There's like six of us and there's like 50 of them. You know what I mean? But I didn't give a fuck. I was, I was there. You know what I mean? Because I was young, wild, and, and had the heart. Right? Now let's fast forward. Now after all that happened, like I told y'all, I'm always on the run. I'm always getting locked up. So when Dex got locked up, you know what I'm saying? I didn't know who he was until I got a greatest for it. When I got a greatest for it, matter of fact, not even greatest for it. When I came back home from Holmesburg, that's when I got the red Benz. And this when I was in this neighborhood. I'm going to show you exactly where I parked my red Benz at. This is Collins Street in Worcester near the, um, that baseball field, right? This is where Big Boo used to live at. Boo used to live in one of these houses. The one should be the head cook at Champagne's or Germantown and Shelf. Now, when I had my red Benz and we had all them cars, we parked all the cars on this block right here, right on the side, the side block on the side of Collins Street. You see how these cars was parked? When we took all them cars off Anderson car lot, my Benz was parked right on the side of this street right here. All the cars we took was parked right here, right, with the little piece of paper in the back of the window, you know, that you know you got a new car or whatever. Now, this 91 summer. Now, I remember specifically this man pulling up right here, pulling up, parking his Cadillac. And that's when I went up in his crib. It might have been this. It's, it's, it's either one of these two cribs. It's either this first crib or is this crib, one of these cribs right here. But Twine went up in there. So I hooked Twine up with him when he came home. He said he opened a refrigerator and it was 500000 in the refrigerator. $500,000. Now, mind you, when OA pulled up in the caddy, we just got finished picking up all these bricks of coke inside of a city blue bag. We were switching cars with somebody and he was like, I got in the back seat. Joe and Main Man sat up front. It was a white Riviera with burgundy leather seats. I'll never forget it. He was like, yo, twin, hand me that city blue bag. I picked this bag up. I had to use two hands because I, I feel like it was car batteries inside of here. It was like six bricks inside the city blue bag. I handed it to him. Boom. Right? So when I handed it to him, we went back on Collins Street. When we went on Collins Street, you know, that's when we went on Collins Street. This is when, this is the area right here. Worcester. See, this Worcester Street. They got some good cheese they got next to LaSalle. That's that area. Worcester. Worcester Street, Worcester and Collins, and all that. Million Dollar Marv, he from up this way and everything, whatever. But, you know, I seen the picture deck. You know, it was a big-ass bottle of champagne damn near two feet tall. I'm like, who this bottle for? He said, that's for Dex when he got out of jail. He said, see that car right there, that 5.0? That all white with the with the level pipe seats. It was all level seats and everything. He said, that's Dex when he come home. Dex had got spent a hundred thousand dollars on his lawyer and everything, but he just couldn't get beat the case, man. And that book is based on why he got locked up, so they say. Well, I'm gonna have to read that book, but I don't really need a book to describe who I was around and who was who. But I will say this much, you know, when I got down with them in the summer of 89, when I ran from, um, they let me go from the study center by accident, you know, just a beer store on the corner of Collins Street, a known beer store that everybody go to. And on top of the beer store is what they have. If you go on the top of this beer store, you have your parties up there and everything. My daughter, my, my grandkids, and had their parties and then everything. I told you when I started hanging up in that neighborhood, you know, Boo, before he, before he passed away, he was like, Marv's sister, me not a Marv's sister like you. I'm like, who? You know, I'm riding around on North Flint, doing my thing or whatever all over the city. And I'm not realizing that I'm around real millionaires that's in these streets. You know, why? I don't give a fuck. I'm around everybody. You know what I mean? I just, I didn't. 
I wasn't so enthused about what somebody had. If you was thorough, you was thorough, right? So when I seen the picture of Dex, I'm like, this the boy just was locked up with me. And then he, the boy used to always call the phone. So I like, so main man put him on the phone with me. I like, what's up? He like, uh, what's up? I see, you remember me? So who used to, I said, uh, remember I was just locked up over Holmesburg, little short twine, used to work out with you. Then I came through, I had the red gators on. He said, yeah, I remember you came through the red gators. He said, you were my fault. I said, yeah. So then he put a good word in for me with main man. Because my right-hand man, right? And main man, right-hand man, was like this over Holmesburg. And that's how I really got really tight with them. You know what I'm saying? So Twine doing all this time with them before he, before he died and everything. He's down a bird. You know what I mean? He did like two or three years down Holmesburg before he went upstate. So if you do all that time down Holmesburg on J-Block around some real dude and you start gelling with him, bidding with him, working out with him, you become family to him. And that's how that went down. So when I first started coming up this neighborhood on Cowan Street of Germantown, this is when I started to realize who was who and what was what. I said, damn, you the boy we was going through the war with. And then I started to see everything. I started to realize everything, but I didn't realize who he was as far as JBM type shit. And the crazy thing is I might have told him I was, I don't know if I ever told him, I might have told him I was into that shit like that. But he just looked at me. I'm not even knowing. I'm talking to the top, top, top boy. You know? But like I told you, people take a strong liking into me and my brother. So when I get locked up and come back home, this is when I find out everything about who's who. Like I told you, man, Dex was selling for the 18 months. Remember I said the boy that got caught all the cigarettes in the cell? That's Dex. You know what I mean? And I could understand why everybody and greatest for it respected this boy and looked up to him. I thought they only looked up to him and respected him because he had a fly ass mouth. He knew how to talk fly. He threw that shit on at the fly glasses. He had gator boots. He had uh, ostrich boots. He had all that shit. You understand what I'm saying? Then him and Moochie was sellies. And I couldn't understand why. You know, he never even came out and told me who he was, like, in the streets and all that. And none of that. Even though we was real close, and I think it was a little animosity because main man talked highly of me knowing that Dex was with him first. You know what I mean? Him and Dex start out working in Germantown Hospital. Yeah, that's how they met. Main man worked in a hospital. And a female told him where half a million dollars that was in a crib. So they was getting a lot of money uptown before the JV was even put together. So when he went in that house and took that money, that's when that shit just elevated into that thing of ours. You know what I'm saying? And the reason why I know this, because the main man himself told me everything. You know what I mean? This is way before the internet. This is 93, 94, he tell me all. You feel what I'm saying? And I'm with him. Salute, salute. What's up, James? What's going on? What's going on? Okay. Desmond, I'm going to give you a rent so I can really see your, 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 your comment. So anyway, now, a lot of people don't understand that when you young and you thorough and people like you, they're going to like your thoroughness, your personality. And a lot of people can't understand or believe that you could be 14 years old and know the whole city, your whole city. And my whole city know me. And I'm not bragging. I'm just letting the youngins know that me and my twin brother, we was the youngins of youngins to be that age. Even though it was probably youngins that was younger than us, like my father. He had a gang called the Mighties before the Valley was even called the Valley. And they was 10, 11 years old, dropping shit and really moving. So it's in my DNA to be how I am, to start out young in the streets and move around like that. You feel what I'm saying? I'm not from Germantown, but I'm up Germantown like that. You feel me? So when main man started to tell me everything and I started to figure out who he was, I felt that it was my right to protect him. Because I knew everybody didn't know who he was. You feel me? Even the dudes that I was down with, who got me down with him. They didn't even know. And I kept it to myself because of loyalty to the JBL, as well as to anybody else. But one thing I never did was, if I'm around you and you got a squad, right, and I'm cool with all these other squads, I never reveal 
information when we talk to each other. And I know about certain whatever it could be about. It could be about homicides. It could be about getting money. It could be about anything. I keep it in that circle. You understand what I'm saying? So I didn't go from squad to squad. I was down with everybody at the same time. For real, for real. So when I start to see shit, and I just start to see all these different females come around. In nice cars. In mink coats. He would dress regular. He wouldn't even dress fly. I said, this man is a genius. Who don't want to be around somebody that's a genius that's in the streets when you are trying to gain information because you love information. I love information. I love to learn, you know? So when I really start to realize who Dex was, I remember him jumping off the back of that truck. He was the biggest one out of all of them. You feel me? And for me to be in the cell with him for 18 months and to really get to know him, I see why he had all the women he had. You know what I mean? Why everybody in the jail respected and loved him. And I'm he straight up, you know, we in the shower, you around, you know, it's like on, on Greatest for it, they got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, like eight shower rooms. Eight, I think eight or four shower rooms. I know it's like a shower room, one on, you know, it's Greatest for it blocks are real long. On the first half of the block, you got a shower room on the bottom tier and the top tier, bottom tier and the top tier, and vice versa, right? If, I, if my memory served me correctly, one day we in the shower, everybody got their drawers on, of course, washing up. It might be one or two dudes in there that ain't Muslim that's in there butt naked. And a lot of times you don't want to be in the shower with nobody like that, right? So we all up in there talking shit, that's in there talking his shit. And there's a lot of young boys on C block with us who used to just stare at me and grit on me. And Dex was like, yo, I see a lot of niggas was gritting on you in the shower, top. And I was like, why, why you think they gritting on me? And these dudes I know, these I play spades with, dudes that's from North, from Oxford Street, Blumberg, Jefferson Street, from all over. But I didn't know why, but Dex knew. Dex said the reason why they looking at you like that, because all of them might be a little jealous and envious because you with me. And you got a hell of a name. And I'm a third last individual. And a lot of dudes used to like to be around Dex. Because they knew who he was. And you know, when you're in jail, you're going to hear about somebody's case and how they is from other people. And you try to cut into him. Me, I didn't know nothing about his case and none of that. I just knew he was my man, young boy, who I was out there putting work in with. He's telling him, listen, man, hot got your back. He's looking at my size, man. He's thinking that. And he tell me what my man said on the visit. Because he come see him. He said, man, he tell me you, you built like that, this, that, and the third. And you pulled the have my back in here because we got the package in here. And he laughed. And I was kind of felt hurt when he laughed. Because he don't know how I really am. But main man told him. Now, why would main man tell you some shit like that? You feel me? Because he never seen me in gorilla mode. You feel what I'm saying? But most of the people in the jail already knew. You feel what I'm saying? So it kind of like hurted me a little bit because I knew it was envious on his part. Because I'm with his old head. You feel what I'm saying? So it was like, it was fucked up, man, because his mom wound up dying while he was in jail. They lost the crib, 6060 Beachwood Street. That's the crib Dex lived in, 6060 Beachwood Street. I never forget the uh, address because the mail used to come under the door from his mom and his sister, you know? And it so happened that on that same hundred of Beachwood, my daughter mom owned three properties, four or five properties in that neighborhood that her father left her. You understand what I'm saying? So I had a lot of reasons to come up that neighborhood. I got a daughter up that neighborhood. I got a few grandkids by my, you know, because my daughter got kids now, so and then main man used to try to get in touch with me. My daughter, like, you know, main man trying to reach you. You know, because everybody ain't gonna know who he is, but they don't know that he's that boy. They just know he get a lot of money. You know, there's a lot of drug dealers all over the city, but they don't know he that boy. Now I find out he that boy when Moochie called from Greatest Boy to call his phone and say, I see you with main man. Then main man said, Yeah, they said come to the mansion and drop off trash bags full of money to the big house. 
Then I see the picture, the wedding picture. We at Mount Airy. We somewhere at Mount Airy, right? Inside this house, right? And I tell you, this boy had a lot of properties. So when I see this wedding picture, it ain't his wedding, but it's a wedding picture. It might have been his wedding, for real, for real, to be honest with you. But he told me it wasn't. But when I seen the brothers on the picture with him, they all had black tuxedos on, and main man was in the middle. Then I seen Simon on it. And I was like, I know Simon from Uptown. And I see this picture, and I put two and two together. I'm like, you the man they talk about in the news saying JBM, they said JBM members behind the scene that went to college was from up Mount Airy. That's the first thing flashed in my head. Remember that shit that flashed across the news. And, I, and when they talked about it, and I put two and two together, I said, I'm in Mount Airy, right? I know this man is highly intelligent. I don't know none, none of these men on this picture with Simon and Main Man. And Main Man is in the middle. He ain't like he's on the end. It ain't like he's next to the end. He's in the middle of all these men. And they was the men. That picture. That if y'all saw it, that's like worth a billion dollars. Because that's the men behind the scene. Like the Wizard of Oz. Only I seen that picture. Out of everybody is somebody. I seen the picture. Simon might have seen it because he was at the wedding. But I seen the picture. I could be masked up. Like one day I was masked up, had my glasses on and everything. And I went in Foot Lock. Right? I bought some Jordans. The number threes. And they're bullshitting around. And Simon was in there. I said, Simon. What's up? He hugged me. You know what he said? He said, I knew that was you. People know me by my walk and my whole structure. And a dude like him, he gonna watch everything around him. You understand what I'm saying? So Dex called me. I think at Cold Township now. But last time I think I really talked to him was like in 2013, 2014. You know, he wanted me to send some money to some girl. $200 to some girl. You know what I mean? So he sent it to him. He wouldn't send it to her. Yeah, I mean, a lot of times dudes want you to help. I don't know what it is when, see, when somebody want me to send money not to them into a female that they may have just met, that kind of like throw me off a little bit. But he did have his pen pal. They used to write him that was in Texas jail, right? She was a nice looking Mexican female, right? But she was writing, Dex Dex was writing her, but she stopped writing because I think she was about to go home. But she, he told me, he said, he said she's in a gang. This girl was in a gang. Y'all be surprised. Mexicans they live out in Texas and Arizona. They be in real gangs. And guess who her Sully was? Her Sully was the woman that killed the Mexican singer, Selena. That was her Sully. And she sent, and they had a picture together. And she sent it to him. How ironic is that? I didn't hear about Selena until I was locked up when Jennifer Lopez played that role. Now they got on Netflix as a series her whole life. Anyway, the book Alibi is about this drug, this stash house getting robbed, right? And it was these dudes. I'm a matter of fact, I'm a, it was these dudes, right? I'm going to just look it up. I'm going to just read it to y'all. The book called Alibi is by Terry Woods, right? Now, when Terry Woods, Terry Woods wrote this book called Alibi, right? Now, I'm going to tell you what the book Alibi is about. This is how it looked. I want y'all to go cop this book by Terry Woods called Alibi. It's about my homie Dex. It's a two men think they found the perfect opportunity, a chance to rob the stash house of Simon Schuler. Now, how about that? Look at that name, Simon Schuler. Simon is a real person who I told y'all about. And Schuler, because you're talking about Daryl Schuler, Marty Schuler, Schuler, right? Now, she put those two names together to really get them both shout outs. And she was hanging around Dex and all of them. Terry Woods, my cousin. You know what I mean? My cousin, Lisa Woods, my Sister Sabrina Woods Bryant, you know what I mean? 
they all was in that circle. Like I told you, my sister, the red bone, that's on the picture of my twin brother, Sabrina. They all was in this circle because they all around the same age, right? Let me finish. One of Philadelphia's biggest drug lords, but their plans are spoiled when one of Shula's men catches them as they break into the stash house. They say, tempers flare as the men capture Shuler's worker, Poncho, and force him to show them the goods. What they didn't expect was for Poncho partner to be armed and very dangerous. All altercations breaks out and when the smoke clears, Nard, Poncho's accomplice, is the only one left standing. Thinking quickly, Nard cleans shop and makes his escape but not before being spotted by a few neighbors. Not wanting to kill anyone else, he makes a mean dash for the streets, but wonders if the witnesses will give up his identity. What he needs now is a plausible alibi. If he doesn't come up with one fast, it could mean life in prison or a death sentence, or a death on the streets. Now, let me tell you something about that situation. The alibi was Terry Woods. Terry Woods was supposed to be Dex's alibi. That's why she wrote that book. Nard supposed to be Dex. That's why I want y'all to read that book, man, called Alibi. At this time, I didn't even know. You know, I talked to Terry Woods not too long ago. You know what I mean? Because like I told you, my sister Sabrina, that's, they, that's her first cousin on her mom's side. Sabrina is my sister on my father's side. You know what I mean? So... It's just crazy they was all in that same circle. They were all from Uptown. You know what I mean? Georgie Woods that made the Georgie Woods potato chips. Georgie Woods that worked at the record company and all that. One of his daughters is my cousin Lisa Woods. You feel me? And all of them lo got long hair, chinky eyes. They all red bones. You know what I mean? My sister Sabrina, all of them. So they all in that circle, all in that JVM life, that circle and everything. So when she was riding around writing a book called True to the Game, it was based on Philly. And if you look at the book Alibi or True to the Game, she gave Dex a shout out, you know. But Dex was using her as an alibi, but something went wrong. She wasn't an alibi no more. You know what I mean? And I was like, well, Dex, how do you get 40 years with the feds? Allegedly, they found an M16 rifle, assault rifle. In his apartment building. Because back then, when them Jettas first came out, when them Jettas, when the Jetta first came out, Dex had a red one with rims, BBS rims on it. The red tinted Jetta. Yeah. And Dex was like the big enforcer, but how they met was ironic to me. They both was working. Working men, a thing, main man, and Dex had probably all the women inside the hospital. And then when he took that, when main man took that half a million, he put Dex under his wing. You know what I mean? Dex was really that bull, man. I'm trying to tell you, man. And when I was in the cell with him from 18 months and how we met and like how we first encountered shooting at each other, I'm shooting at them. Well, the first shootout, I wasn't around, you know? That was little Don. He was by himself and he was messing with some Spanish girl on 15th and Diamond. 15th between, on 15th Street, but like in the, on the most, you know how you, you have a block, you got little small blocks in between this long ass block. I'm going to draw, I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. Because you know, y'all already seen that, the video, right? But anyway, the, the, the video, hold up, 15th and Diamond. Because I want y'all to see this, right? Now, when I show you 15th and Diamond, I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about. Now, this is Diamond Street, right? This is 15th and Diamond, right? Now, I'm going to come up to the block where I'm, I'm going to show you that shit happened there. Now, on Diamond Street, which is that long block, there's two other blocks in between there. It's Fontaine. This is Fontaine, right? And then... You have, see Fontaine go down. See, see how Fontaine go down? But it's still on 15th Street. It's like, if you got a long block, and then you got little blocks that cut 
on the side of that block. I'm a matter of fact, I'm gonna just draw it for y'all because I want everybody from around the world who don't even understand what I'm saying, but people in Philly know. But I'm gonna just show people what I'm talking about. Now you're gonna have this long block. Say this long right here is 15. This right here represents 15th Street, right here. This right here. But in between 15th Street, you have you see this long 15th Street, but when you you have two blocks that run into 15th Street, two small blocks. Page and Fontaine Street, right? Now, I'm on, now they, I think they, they, they trap him. They don't trap him, but they stop him on Page. Is it Page? It got to be Page. I think it's Page Street, which is right here. This block right here. He's missing houses. This is Page Street right here. See, this Page Street. Page Street has a lot of missing houses on the corner, right? But Page Street still have a block to go. See that block to go down? That's Page Street, that block to come up, but it's still the block I was telling you about. But if you turn around here, you will see across the street is one of the, the houses we was in. Now, I'm on top of this one of these steps, right? But I'm shooting up the block, which is this corner right here. Where that car parked at. That's 15 for NARS. I'm shooting at them. Well, no, right, well, we're going to go to the first time this happened. Now, they was surround him on this block right here, Page Street, Lil Donnie. It was, it was, it was my main man, Million Dollar Marv, a couple other dudes. And they get money in his house. They doing numbers in his three-story crib. But Lord Donnie got this Spanish girl he's dealing with. And it's doing you know, like a couple of hours, but they say something to him. Like they call himself stepping to him, surrounding him. He come get us. The next day, we go up there that night. And I see all these dudes pull up on them cars. And I see these niggas about to get busy. So before they start getting out, as soon as they start jumping out the car, I'm on top of the step. In the middle of this block, on the top of the step, right? I'm on one of these steps right here in the street corner that's, that I'm banging at is right up the street up here. That's the right way? That's the wrong way. My fault. Which is Nar Street with these cars down under this tree. As they exited the car, I got the Glock in my hand. Boom, boom, boom. I'm trying to take their heads the fuck off. I'm 16 years old. This is like the winter of 89, a few days before 1990 New Year's come in. Like I told you, when the gun got jammed, I ran the crib, tried to unjam it. I couldn't unjam it, so I put the gun in his baby playpen. Main man took it out. Give me this gun. Took the gliz out, out went back out there with Donnie, and they, that shit was what it was. Then I went back out there, started taking all the 45 shells up from the Tommy gun. And dumped it in the trash can. You feel me? That's when we had that meeting up road of Germantown and Erie at the Eagles where the Maxes was at. You know? And it's crazy. I was like, I'm talking to Maine, man. He said, Listen, man, y'all weren't gonna leave that joint alive. I said, What you mean? He said, You see that dice game that was outside of Eagles? I gotta show y'all Eagles, man. I want to show y'all this shit, man. I got to show y'all this shit because this shit is crazy. Germantown and Erie. Now, when I show you Germantown and Erie Ave, right? I'm going to show you Germantown and Erie Avenue. And when I show you Germantown and Erie, I hope they let me see. The, I hope they go to the map, right? Now, now y'all see. All right. Right here, y'all see right here in front of Max's, right? Max's cheesesteak, Eagles Bar, right? Oh, that's the clock bar. Eagles Bar is right on the side, right here. That's Eagles, and on the corner is Max's. Max's wasn't near at the time, I don't think. But it just was Eagles Bar. It was just Eagles Bar. I don't even think it was selling cheesesteak at the time. They all out here in front of right here shooting dice, right all right here in this wall. And it's dudes up there from Mariano, I know, but I'm acting like I'm shooting. I'm acting like I'm betting too. 
we go up in there though. When I go up in the bar, me and Joe, we got a fork and a knife on us. No bullshit. My man had the rabbit hat on. He said he had two nines pointed at Donnie through his pockets because he never took his hands out of his pocket while he was talking to Donnie. Donnie had a nine with three bullets in it because I, I don't know how many bullets we had left in that one gun he had. Yeah, unless he had another gun on him I didn't know about. But they was in there talking it out. Just them two. It was like six of us all together. Them, it was like a thousand of them. He said, don't you know all them dudes out there shooting dice? They always with me. That whole bar, everybody in that bar partying was with me. And all them dudes off the truck. But what they didn't know, everybody up Erie Avenue that was in there, I knew. So that shit wouldn't have went down like that on, on like for real, for real, because that's my gang gang. Everybody in there from Erie Avenue. You feel me? My whole team. So I was kind of fucked up when he told me all this. He said, yeah, man, y'all want to go make it out of here. So by him telling me all this, man, I was fascinated by it, man, for real. But I still didn't know who he really was, but I knew he was somebody. How the fuck you get a whole bar, they act like they partying, right? And they really with you. The dice game outside and the dudes getting off the truck. That's power, man. That's power. You know what's crazy? They members of the JBM that I didn't even know from uptown. But they start to know who I was when I start to really be up Germantown, West Oak Lane, and Mount Airy with Main Man. That, that bar on Broad Street. Remember that, remember that time I did that video? And I did the video, and I was on Broad and Alney? Let me show y'all something. There's a bar, I think it was called Night on Broadway. They turned to a go-go bar, but 93 New Year's is when we celebrated New Year's. And my, and my son, mom, got mad at me because I pulled him on her New Year's. I wanted to be with him at this party. You know what I mean? I was pulled to meet up with her, but you know what I mean? And this is how I knew he was somebody. Broad and Alany. Watch this. Watch this bar show, y'all. Y'all, there's a bar to go down the steps. There's mirrors on both sides of this bar. We go down these steps. But I'm strapped and everything. Y'all see that, that picture I show y'all when my hair was round and high and I'm on that button picture? That's how I exactly looked at that, at, the, at that particular time. And main man who owned this bar, he had goons in there too. But he had so much respect for my people. Because he knew who my people was. I just didn't know. At the time, I might have knew, I might have didn't know. I don't know. It's, it's like borderline that I'm about to know or already knew. You feel me? I don't think I knew at the time, but I think I had a pretty much good idea as to he had to be somebody important. Now I'm on Broad Alney. I'm about to show you all this shit, man. This is this is this is unbelievable that this bar all up across the street. This was King Erna from, you know? Jeff Gant told me King Erna asking some shit when they was in a bar, when they was in, locked up in the feds in New York, he gonna say, oh, why you ain't get sentenced yet? <laughs> so King Erna was always on his shit, man. He always, like, the shit he doing now, he was doing that shit in the feds. No bullshit. I cannot make this up. Now, I think if I'm mistaken, this might be it. You see that thing that's coming down? Either yeah, that's this place the night the uh, the bar was at, but it's on in the, one of these hundreds over here. It was a nightclub near Broad and Champlos, I believe, or near Broad Negro. And right across the street from there is this bar that everybody used to get money at and go to. And go to the bar right here. This see this, I'm gonna show y'all something. If you're from uptown, you're from Germantown, West Oakland, and all that, you know about this area right here. This is a known bar. We was in this bar, too. We was in this bar, and everybody in the bar knew him. That's when I met the shorty in there. Yeah, you know I mean? She knew Dex and everything. Yeah, you know I mean? She, she dealt with Dex before, but she dealt with me, too. <laughs> they used to be on this wall getting money. If you know this wall across you from this bar, you from uptown, you know, dudes just be up here getting money. It used to be Jamaicans up here getting money, too. Yeah, but Jamaicans up here getting money on this wall. I don't remember that shit. You know? But this bar right here and this nightclub across the street, the nightclub was across the street somewhere 
on this side of the street was that was that bar called Night on. Yeah, there was that bar, right? Now listen, I'm a young boy. You know what I mean? But I was about that life. And you can understand why the women loved me so much and wanted me so much is because how I looked. I mean, no bullshit, man. I'm going to show y'all that, that video, that picture, so y'all can see clearly. Because I don't want nobody to be like, oh, man, he, he fraud. Ain't nothing fraud about this. It's the real deal, man. And I'm about to go right to that video, show y'all. Because I made it not too long ago, and y'all seen that video. I'm about to show it to y'all right now. This video, how I looked when I was rolling with Maine, man. Here you go, right here. This is the video. I'm about to show y'all that picture. I'm going to get right to it. I'm about to show y'all that photo. Now, when I show y'all this picture, right, I want y'all to see how somebody going to text me from Southwest and say, Rock Mason was the youngest JV member. Probably at that time. But when man Mikey got down with him, we was the youngest. You know? I'm trying to find this picture because I'm trying to get slow. I won't miss it. You know, because I want anybody to shoot this picture of me. I had this button on, man. Like, we was all uptown, man. You know, somebody gonna say, wow, I always talk about 29th and Jefferson. I talk about a lot of shit. It's just that 29th and Jefferson. This is the picture right here, y'all. Y'all see this picture right here of me? First, I'm gonna show y'all the whole picture so y'all can see it. So when it comes up. Oh, y'all about to see it. It's going to come up. And y'all going to see the picture of me. That's Mike in 89. Right? When he's up Chuck's nightclub. Up here he has. That's Mikey again. But I'm trying to get to this picture real fast. So I can show y'all. You know what I mean? Here it go. See that picture right there? Yeah, I had my hair. Now y'all can see why the females was up on me. I was that boy. See? That's how I looked when I was up there with Main Man. So you can understand why it wasn't hard for me for females to be up on me anywhere we went. So we up there, you know what I'm saying? And Dex still locked up. He's still calling this and everything. And this, before I even go upstate. I ain't upstate yet. I mean, I just got out from the juvenile joint. And every time I was out there snatching niggas up and going to war and all that, Main Man was with us. Yeah, you know I mean, I'm with him. I know who he is and everything. And I'm, yeah. So, Dex, they made a book about it. That's fucking crazy, man. You know, that's why the book was so accurate. That's why Terry Woods can mention a lot of street shit in Philly because all she really doing is switching the names up, taking and adding other people's names into true stories. All her stories are true. The book Be More Careful, that's a Baltimore um, novel that the boy, he was selling with my brother, say, called Fratville, a, a minor boy. Or he might have been a seller of Smithville. He's with my brother, brother say, who's selling up Smithville. And he's from Baltimore, and he sold Terry Woods the book for $80,000, and she made $3 million off the book Be More Careful. Yeah, because her name was ringing. You know, the female, there's so many females out there from all across the United States that was in the game. If they came out like Miss T from New York, how she came out there talking about Alpo and all of them, there's a lot of females in D.C., Detroit, Chicago, L.A., Atlanta, Miami, Philly. You feel me? Boston. All over. L.A. everywhere. If they was to get and sit down and start writing and start taking names out and just saying, Based on three events, we just changed the names. Yeah. But the reason why a lot of females don't do that because they didn't want on with their life. And I don't know. But this is going to wake up and open the door for a lot of people to come out with their content. And for those that don't know, I'm almost at 1,700 videos. So if you only seen a few that I made of J Street, then you ain't seen the other ones. Some of all of why I talk about J Street. Because let me tell you why I talk about 29th and Jefferson. First of all, Bobby Brown used to come down 29th and Jefferson. 
the who's who in Philly used to come down 29 with Jefferson, the whole J Street, did buy Sarah. You feel me? And Boone School, when they got, when they when they put Boone School on 26 in Jefferson, between 26 and Jefferson, 26 and Oxford, Daniel Boone School, the baddest, roughest school in probably America. You know who ran that school? Dudes from 29th Street, 29th and Jefferson, 28th and Oxford. That whole neighborhood is 29th Street. You feel me? And if you was around back in the day and you was over Holmesburg, you seen them dudes from 29th Street in there. One on Mark. We used to referee the basketball games over the bird. Roscoe and them that's upstate. You know what I'm saying? Moon, Hoagie, Cheesesteak. They locked Cheesesteak over at Mexico while he was in the ring when they indicted him. This is why I can name 29th Street because I know who was who when we first got in the streets. They was boosting and stealing way before we started boosting this stuff. They was in the drug game way before we was in the drug game. So why wouldn't I give them any props if I know who pioneered that shit on that side of Broad Street? You know what I mean? The roughest school. Chasing dudes from all over the city to the 15 trolley and all the way to Broad and Gerard to the subway. Yeah. And what's around the corner from Boom School? Blumberg Projects. Come on, man. Come on now, like, and then they turn into a, a school that girls can go to that's bad. Come on now, I gotta get 29th Street they props because they have they help pioneer this. Yeah, y'all don't know, man. Y'all wasn't around. If you was around, if you was around Philly back in the 80s, you'd have seen the no neighborhoods, 25th and Diamond Project, which is 23rd, 25th and Diamond, which is Raymond Rose Project, Richard Allen Project, right? 29th and Jefferson, 17th and Jefferson, right? 8th and Butler, Erie Avenue, you feel me? 11th and Cumberland, right? 18th and Cumberland, 17th and Cumberland, 16th and Cumberland, 100th and Street. You know what I mean? I'm talking, I'm talking about na- known neighbors, 8th and Diamond, 12th and Dolphin. These are known neighborhoods around the city. Then you had 52nd and Woodland, 52nd and Baltimore. Chester Ave, Cedar Ave, 54th Street, the Delhi, 54th, 52nd of Warrington, South Philly, 13th and Fitzwater, Martin Luther King Project, 13th Street, Fifth Street Projects, 31st and Tasca, Wilson, you know what I mean? Hilltop, out West Philly, 49th and Hoop Street, Ringo Street, the Dirty Bottom, Wallace Street down the bottom, 40th and Brown. You understand me? 52nd and Parkside, 60th and Lansdowne, 63rd and Lansdowne, Felton Street. You know what I mean? 51st and Havensburg, 63rd and Delancey. You understand me? All uptown. You know what I mean? Like Dogtown, the Hollow, Happy Hollow. You know what I mean? Brickyard, Somerville. Somerville is where I showed you. That's Worcester Street, where that's from. Somerville. You understand me? Jewtown, you understand me? Pulaski, you know I mean? Wayne Ave, you know what I'm talking about? I'm just giving you all these jewels, man. And so if you want to come out with your content about your neighborhood, I'm the one to open the door for everybody. Everybody was scared to go on the internet. They're like, damn, if hockey wrong, get on there. And anybody come at him sideways, I can come out with my shit. Can't keep working with pride, man. I see why a lot of young boys really want the fame before they want the money. Because who don't want to be remembered? I'd rather have the fame than the money. At least you're going to be remembered. You could have all the money and nobody know you. You understand what I'm saying? But when you're famous, your name will always be remembered. You understand me? Martin Luther, Dr. The late Dr. Martin Luther King and Malcolm X could have been billionaires. But they was here for the people. Like, I'm here for the people. You know what I'm saying? I got my own show. That's a hum do it lie. But at the same time, I got it for you. You know what I mean? As a learning piece. You feel me? I'm in the mix with these boys. You know what I mean? Like, in the trenches. 
Philly trenches, you hear me? All over the city. Rubbing shoulders with these dudes. I get upgraded for it. And I'm like, damn, I know it's geographical, right? Because neighborhoods in Philly still geographical against each other, right? But the old heads, they all cool with each other. You would never think that JBM and South Philly would ever be cool with each other because of the big war they went through. You would think North Philly and South Philly wouldn't get along. When my cousin Butterfelton came on BF, South Philly ain't give him no hand. They ain't helping him get on his feet. Somebody from North helped him. That's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> you understand me? And then Mooch called my cousin from South Philly, help him out, look out for him. So that they, and it's no beef. Them dudes help each other. I was downgraded for it when I seen Clark from Young Guns, one of the top dudes from Young Guns, if not the top. But it's from Richard Allen, right? Fat Robbie from Richard Allen. I seen these dudes on the Lifers Committee with Ty Queen that's home, that was in the Nation Islam, that's home that they're doing 28 years. They was on the same Lifers Committee working together. Then they had got Daryl Shuler to come up in the jail, right? To talk to all these bosses from all over the city that became one unit, one sound, one beat. And they did a talk, they did like a talk show, but over the radio. Y'all remember that, y'all remember that. Power 99 or WDHS, Power 99 radio or WDHS radio came up into greatest for. And got all these dudes that was somebody and greatest for it to sit down to talk about the youth. That's power. You know how many dudes call me from jail say, yeah, man, I got this program together for the youth. Yeah. Jeff Gant even got one. Moochie got one. They all got a, a organization for the youngins because they don't want y'all to go through them jails they, they in. You understand what I'm saying? And this is some real shit. I'm not making none of this shit up, man. Like, when I tell you all this shit and I drop these Jews on y'all and I, and, I, and I tell y'all some street shit, is to let you know, man, that if we don't come together as a whole, we fucked up. Don't y'all know that the Russian president, the Russian leader, Putin, is thinking about putting nuclear weapons because he knows he's losing that war in Ukraine. And Ukraine, if they get them... Bombs dropped on them, the United States gonna get involved. And then everything gonna be fucked up out here, man. So y'all keep killing each other. Y'all gonna find yourself on the front line in, in a war. They're gonna start drafting. Don't y'all know them Russians? Russian civilians is being locked up. They flee in the country because Putin is trying to draft them into this war, forcing them into a war. Cause they losing it. And that shit gonna affect us in many different ways. That's why we got to come together, man. We have to come together. Seriously, because if we don't, even though I know y'all not, until this war jump off, remember y'all heard it from me first, though. Look it up. Look it up what uh, Putin doing right now. Go see what he's doing. He got these mass destruction weapons. He about to release them because he mad about losing this war. And that's going to make the United States jump into it. Price is going to go up on everything. We're going to really be in a state of emergency. So stack up on your spring waters and your canned goods. Don't wait to the last minute. You know, we last minute people. Don't wait to the last minute to try to stack up on that shit. You understand me? Seriously. Yeah, man, I, I looked at that book. Well, I didn't know about the book until um, Ego, that's up Albion, told me about it. He called me like, yeah. I, we start talking about Dex. He's like, yeah, what well, Dex? I said, Dex of Cold Township. He said, you know, um, there's a book about Dex called Alibi. I tell you, well, you know, say, no, it's my people's. He said, I know. You know what I mean, like, my sister, Sabrina, used to, because people used to send their books to Terry. And she used to ask my sister, Sabrina, to proofread it. You know what I mean? I was going to give him my 19 crooks to look over, but I gave it to my cousin, Tracy, who ain't get back with me yet. But I ain't concerned about it. You know what I mean? Because at the same time, I got so many things going on in my mind 
that I'm trying to do, that I'm trying to accomplish, man. I just don't want people to think Philly is just a small ass place, even though it's small compared, it ain't small, but it's just that New York is more people that live in New York than they do Philly. So Philly will be in the shadows of New York because of the majority of people it is and how they act. But trust and believe, Philly is just as worse. We ain't loud without shit. New Yorkers, don't get me, don't, I know disrespect to New Yorkers. It's just that y'all loud, like Busta Rhyme loud. You understand what I'm saying? Like Wu-Tang loud. Y'all loud. Yeah, son, yeah, son. Yeah, B, yeah, B, word to your mother. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, when I first hand all, they hand all their lingo, you know they make up their own lingo. You know what I mean? That shit was just fascinating to me to see. Because it's like, to me, New York is like a big outlet of stores. That's how I see New York. They just got all these foreigners over there. They got so much they can choose from that it's not no original style. They might got so many different styles. You could walk down one New York City block and you might have like 15 different stores from different parts of the world on one block. That's New York. You feel me? Philly is just, if you're from Philly, you know what I mean? Knowing Philadelphia was the first city, the first state that everybody came to, even though before it was the state, America was based on Philadelphia. And then people start branching out, going other places, migrate and all that. You feel me? But like I told you, my father and mother is from New York. I think she's from the Bronx, South Bronx. If I ain't mistaken. You know what I mean? So I got family in New York, family in Baltimore, family in Philly. My mom family originally from Baltimore. And my father family is from New York. You know, they came over here. My mom, mother met a man, you know. And, I, and then I thought my great-grandfather, Italian, Brunetti, Brunetti Caselli, I thought he met my great grandmother on South Street. They got married on South Street. They married, they, they met each other in Baltimore at the horse tracks. So if they met at Baltimore at the horse track, they both had money. You feel what I'm saying? Grandma and used to moonshine and shit. They was getting money back in the day. I'm talking about my grandma and mother. They was getting money. So I come from this shit, man. So the way I act. It's just in my blood to act like this. It ain't like I got in the streets and wanted to be down with people. It's just that this is who I was. I ain't one of the type of dude to say, okay, you got a colorful name. I want to be around you. No. I just so happened to be around certain individuals. It's just when you're in the streets, the streets will take you all over the place. And then and then introduce you to different individuals if you that thorough to the point when I meet somebody. Next thing you know, I'm over their crib. I'm meeting their whole family. I know their whole hood. And that's how that shit go down. And every, everywhere me and my brother went, you know? And it's just fascinating how we get into JBM in, in 89. For the spring of 89, we get into JBM when I run. Matter of fact, I run from Glen Mills in 89 May. A month later, or two months later, we're in the JBM, right? Not knowing the history behind it until I really get in it. You understand what I'm saying? And it's nothing to brag about, you know? But if y'all read that book, Elibi, you know, y'all gonna like, damn. You understand what I'm saying? You got life for some homicides in 40 years with the feds because they found, allegedly found, an M16 assault rifle in his apartment. How do I know this? Because Dex told me. We were selling for 18 months. And I didn't never I, I could never understand why Black Sam, Black Magic from JBM, used to always be around Dex all the time. He's coming to sell. All the Southwest dude, Lil Jet, ST, um, the boy Deuce, Big Deuce from West Philly. From 50 seconds, he was getting all that money up Hilltop. They had the blue BMW. And then him and Mushi was selling before. And then another brother. Forget it. He got a Muslim name. And 
Lama Dean or, or something like that, but he was a fly ass old head. And all he wore was them gators and them fly ass clothes. Him and Dex were sellies too. But they got transferred out of the jail or went home or some shit. But this before I got down Greatest Four. This one, Greatest Four, was called Greater World. I was up Cold Township and down Holmesburg and at Camp Hill when Greatest Four was wide open. Everybody was going around Greatest Four using them credit cards and all that. You feel me? And Dax was married to the girl from South Philly. And he told us he was coming home in 18 months. And South Philly threw a monkey wrench in there. She was a bad, she was one of the toughest shorties from South Philly. And they seen Dex on the dance floor when they heard he got married to her and threw the monkey wrench and told her he got life. And then she, she jumped ship on him. You know, he showed me the pictures of and everything, man. Yeah, man, like, it's crazy, man. It's just crazy, man. And you know what's crazy about it? We always go to the, the Ed Feast together inside the auditorium. Go down to magic, break out fast. You know, and one thing about them, they stuck together, especially with them Sahara bags. I be mad at shit sometimes. The brother used to come. This is JVM pitch. I got to show y'all. My brother Beans on it, Moochie on it, um, Bayok from Richard Island on it, uh, little Brad, um, Bobby Payne. All the boys is on this picture, no Philly, right? But one of the brothers is on the picture. I'm going to show you this picture. That this the two of these brothers that's on here. He used to give out the Sahara bags, right? And he used to come to the cell and give Dex extra milks, extra juices, and shit like that, extra boiled eggs. And I used to say to myself, Oh, these boys sticking together in this joint. And that's how they really stuck together. No boys, they really stuck together like that, man. I mean, it was enough extra bags to give out, but they only gave them out to they to they squad. And this is what I used to I peeped it, man. But this is how they jailed. They did this every year. They had three masjids, Tarba. I used to go to Tarba, but it was two other masjids that people used to go in. Then they made a big, a new one in there that we used to go, go in and everything, man. And what I didn't like about Greatest Ford and the prison system, masjid, they got to go to Harrisburg and they got to they handpick these brothers to be the E man of the jail. You know, with Suleiman Bay and Butter Felton from South Philly, they worked in a chapel. They was right near the direct phone. You imagine that? So I could say SP. You know what I mean? My brother said he used to work in the magic too. But they was like, so you walk into the chapel, they sitting right at the desk, right next to the direct phone. That's power. When you in prison, you ain't around on a collect phone. You around a direct phone. I used to go down there all the time to get on the phone. That's where you got to go to when they tell you somebody died in your family and shit like that. Because my father passed away when I was down grade school. You know? And Gang War Bates and all of them, I gave them a picture of, you know, I gave them a picture of my, um, of my dad, obituary. And Gang War Bates and I made copies, but he never gave me the John back, man. And I was like, I had a lot of pictures of my father, but it was like, yeah, you know I mean, this was crazy, man. I was looking at this nigga like, cause I'm about to go home anyway, so I really wasn't really mad about the picture. Here go the here go right here, the thumbnail. I don't know if y'all can really see it. Damn, I wish I could see this. Here, Damn, man, I got this picture I want y'all to see, but I don't think y'all can see it unless. Damn, it's right here. Y'all can't see it because fuck. It's this picture right here. I know y'all really can't see it. This picture right here. We're now on it from Frankfurt. And all the Muslim brothers on there. Well, the Muslim brother that you really can't see that's next to the brother with the plaid shirt on next to Nah. The boy had the brown shirt on. That's the one that was getting out the Sahara bags, you know? And Dex used to always tell me. That boy schooled me on a lot of shit. I ain't gonna lie to y'all, man. He said, Hop, you on 11. You gotta turn it down to four, man. You gotta tighten up a little bit. Man, he used to really school me on how to really be. I was young. I was wild and young. Like old dogs, men in society. And he schooled me, man. So when I started to be in the set, when I was in the cell for 18 months, I started really imitating his whole style. 
which I never did before. You be around somebody, some of their words gonna rub up on you. That's why Black Magic, Black Sandwich, Jamie, like, yeah, you act just like that. He said it to me, you know. And this was uh the year ninety seven to ninety six, ninety seven, ninety eight. I was on E block and C block. Then I went home. No, I was on 97 and 99. I was on C block. Then before I went home in 99, they put me on A block with Keon from 13th Street, Buck from Oxford Street, the twins, Rhinel and Dinell from 7th Street. We was all on the block together, about to come home at this around the same time. When you're about to come home and you short, they put you on A block. You know? But C block and D block and B block, they were the wildest blocks. But D block was the old head blocks. Well, um, Salone and Jamo Fava Ricketts was on B block. And they used to let the old heads out on a little side block. And they used to let C block door open. And then you could go out in the same block. Like it'd be like a yard that we can go in, just us, C yard. And then you could go into the other yard, which is for the old heads, B block and C yard. So I used to go out in the old head yard sometimes to talk to Ricketts, because you know he dealing with my mom. The old head Rico, they used to feed the birds who had 30 years in, in 99, 98. You know I mean he had 30 years in. He used to feed birds and rabbits. You know, like they about to mate. And then bird would jump on the back, flap his wing, and jump off. He said they made it. So I used to come out there and buy a little peanuts and shit for the for the birds and shit. Cause I used to like to be around motherfuckers that had knowledge, you know? And my my son, mom, older cousin, Shahid, short, one of the black mafia members that used to chop heads off and put them on a bar counter. Him and another short old head, they ain't stepped to me. They were like, what's going on? I heard you mess with my little cousin. And I know this boy wasn't no joke. He wasn't no joke at all. You feel what I'm saying? But he respected me, man. You know what I'm saying? And I used to always talk to him and shit about advice and all that. Because all the old heads that knew my father, knew my uncle, was in this jail. You feel what I'm saying? And I was just like, because Jeff Gant would have been the next one in line to control a lot of shit. Now, if you think about it, if JBM when they never died out, even though people was locked up, I'd have been up here in rank, probably running all that shit by now. If it was still around, being as though I know everybody, and there wouldn't have been no internet shit. We just been getting money. You know what I mean? Playing the background, promoting rappers and shit like that. But when the white man gave all that time out, Mister Charlie gave all that time out. Motherfuckers didn't want to get back in, you know what I mean? But one thing I respect about the Italians and the triads and Jamaicans and all them, you can lock them up. And the Irish, they still going to be mobbed until they die. And they, you know what I mean? You got to think about it. Look at the Italian mob. They get locked up in anything, but they, the government still know they're mafia. You know what I mean? But you can't dismantle them. But it's crazy how you can dismantle a black mafia. Two of them in Philly. So one day it might be another black mafia. History repeats itself. You understand what I'm saying? I'm not trying to entice nobody to think about doing it, but history repeats itself. You understand what I'm saying? Damn, Dex. They said Dex a cold township. He work in administration and he top dog in it. Like he really, he got the gift for gab. Man, when he's in greatest for it. He worked at night kitchen, night kitchen. He's a night kitchen worker. He used to crack his door at nighttime so he could take his shower, or whatever. And he used to go down there and he had all the he had females. You know what I mean, he worked in the kitchen, the back kitchen, worked in security. They used to call him sexy dex. No homo. Well, no homo shit. They just called him sexy dex because he had the fly ass gold frame glasses, all different times. Time he wore them fucking clothes, silk, linen, all that shit that you can wear. He wore it in that jail, and 
I don't know, the first time I was upgraded for 1984, I went to go visit Louis Riggins, a black mafia member, right? And I seen people taking money out their pocket that was inmates. They had jewelry on, fly glasses, ring, gold rings on their finger. And they in the jail with all this shit. That's why when Rick is, and I gave my mom that big ass nugget bracelet with diamonds in it, with the word Nate in it. I gave it to my mom before I got locked up. I knew I was going to go to jail. I wouldn't be my mom something. She gave the Ricketts. And Ricketts was in jail. I think you had to send it home when you had to send all your shit home. Because he was in the mods for 20 years. All them lifers was in the mods. So my mom used to come up to the mods on Wednesdays and Saturdays to see Ricketts. Yeah. And then they put him behind the wall and they put him on B block. Yup. Can you imagine you had so long, I think he might have came through greatest for it, but I know Jamal was over there. And Derwin, the younger brother. See, Derwin was in the juvenile system with me. You study sending one of them juvenile placements. That's the younger brother. You know? So we was always family. Then when Mikey came home, he went up southwest to get with Jamal and Salone. But because of Bucky death, it was like they really they wasn't really fucking with North like that no more. You know what I mean? And that's real shit. JBM with JBM, but when Bucky got killed, it was like it was just Southwest body self and JBM. And they didn't fuck with anybody else because, you know what I mean? Like, it's just crazy, man. It ain't like, you know what I mean? I, I wasn't around. I wasn't around when that shit jumped off. I wasn't politicking with it. I wasn't I had no ties to none of that. You know, but I understand why they backed away from my brother. I mean, because Salone told me. Salone looked out for my twin brother. My he had beef over the house correction. Salone said, point him out in the yard. He was rolling with Mikey in jail. On the streets, it was different. I don't know why, but that's what Mikey told my mom. And Mikey told me. He said he was acting funny when he went, when he went, when he went up there when he came home, man. And that's why he started robbing everybody. I don't want skating right. That's what he seen him at. And they all front on him, so he just start robbing everything up there. Seriously. Him and C from 29th and Jefferson. And Booby Raw from Frankfurt. It was on route. You feel me? So when I was over home with Simone on J Block, he had a picture of Bucky. You know that picture they show of Bucky? And it's like Atlantic City picture. Him and his baby mom, the Atlantic City got the Alpinas on. And the hand bone chain, the girl got the earrings on. Bucky had that picture. And Bucky, no, I mean, not Bucky, I mean, rest in peace. Salone had that picture and a picture of Bucky with his baby or something, or a baby, with a few pictures he had of him. And he, so that's when he told me how he went down 17 with Jefferson and got in a major shootout down there. And Kellis was flying across his face. And I don't think it was no enemy he had, it's just that somebody down north he was going through something with. I don't know, because down there, niggas was getting killed all the time on J Street. Picking their shit up, they shot up. Which was they one-on-one, they two-on-two, four-on-four. You know what I mean? The volumes, the, the naws. They were selling that shit major. And, and 17th Jefferson, Titan Street. Now, in South Philly and 13th Street, the reason why I know about it in Titan Street, that my man Bub Mom was selling all the shit. And I met Bubby. On C Block, when I was hanging with Southfield like that, on C Block with Mandela, when Man Dex was selling. Bub, the ran ball, they got visits every week. Baby mom was white, him and behind him, sold the machine, getting it in. Little Weeb and Bub was selling. And Weeb used to cut my hair. So I'm in the cell. I'm in the lion's den. I'm, I'm around all these Southfield goons. The ones that was taking niggas to war. I was around everybody. Because I wasn't geographic. You know what I'm saying? And for them to fuck with me like that, they know I wasn't gay. You understand what I'm saying? So my fuckers know. On some real shit, you know? They used to always come to my cell and want to play me in football. My people's from North. Fat man. And and uh, Sean. 
Sean Harkham, Mary Ash from uh, on the side, Gilly the Kid from and Game from from Low Life. Now, they used to come to the cell every other day to come see if I want to play football. If we're going to see y'all play football, then we're going to big y'all a yard, a yard to lift weights. And Dex used to say, damn, man, they always come get you. Yeah, I mean, I said, hey, because <laughs> it is what it is. So there was a little resentment with that because they used to come to my cell to come get me to play football. Because see, in jail, motherfuckers go with pride in jail. You want people to love you and respect you in jail. I and mean, you get that respect from different people, other people resent that and envy that. Especially when you got your package in the jail. I don't witness these dudes get their package in jail. I didn't, I held it for them, like put it up for them, hit it for them. But it was hot and I wasn't hot. So I got a chance to be around the who's who and what made them tick and all that. I didn't get deep into that shit like that because I knew I was about to go home. You know what I mean? I didn't want to start bitten, even though I was bitten. You feel me? I gotta have a brand new t-shirt on. Cause you know, all the child, all a lot of people don't know this about greatest food. In Huntington, everybody goes to the same kitchen to eat. They call it the mess hall, the child hall. But in greatest food, you go to the back of your block. And they back of the block got a kitchen. And that's where you eat at. So when I would come through, let's say somebody in the yard selling t-shirts, somebody in the block comes selling brand new t-shirts, I would buy them. And a brand new t-shirt is like a polo shirt. And Dex said, damn, they hating on you because you got a brand new t-shirt. So I'm trying to tell you, man, a motherfucker hate on you just because, man. And when me and Dex was sellies, before we was, before I was like, you know, before I, um, um, well, after me and Dex was sellies and they put me on A block, you feel me? And they put me on A block. Y'all see the video I made about Sis Trump, right? This Sis Trump right here. That's Sis Trump. See Sis Trump? I signed Sis Trump. Him and uh, Bernard Hopkins. He won the boxes, one of the one of the original boxes and greatest for. Now Sis Trump, him and Bernard Hopkins, I did a video about a video that I did about him and Bernard Hopkins. But Bernard Hopkins was down greatest for. You know what I mean? When it was greater world. You know what I mean? Like that was a big thing in um in Greatest Four when Nooney Mims was down there was the boxing team. And as y'all saw, Gang War Bates, even though he had life, he was traveling. They were letting life or some lifers travel with the boxing team. And Gang War Bates from 23rd and Diamond, who helped run the prison. I mean, who helped run Diamond Street. Gang with my dad, yeah, you know I mean, he was uh, a lifer, and he was um, that's Lord Donnie right there, pre Lord Donnie up Phoenix, he off death row, and Gypsy Joe down Holmesburg, back in the nineties, you know what I'm saying? And what up? this greatest for two, Bobby Dance, Gypsy Joe, Sean Harkham, who I told y'all to come to my cell, come get me, play football with him, eight ball. Now, the thing is, all of them is from, um, all of them from Mary Ave, but they from um, Gilly the Kid's side, but Gypsy Joe is from the side I lived on. You know what I mean? Still Mary Ave. King Tut, right here, Mary Ave, was on the same side. As Gilly the Kid, right? Now, I'm about to show y'all that picture of me when I was down the Ford, even though y'all seen it a million times. I'm just to give y'all a little better insight. That's me and, and Aaron on A Block going down the gym taking pictures before we go home. Feel me? Y'all seen how I rock my cut? You know what I mean? And not only that, y'all seen how the footwork was. You know, you know what I mean? The Brooks, the $90 Brooks I had on, only one in the jail with them things, the sweatpants. 
See the trophy case right there beside us in the gym? Go down to the gym and take your pictures. You know what I mean? You walking down? I'm walking down. Let's go take some pictures, man. You know what I mean? I ain't got to lie about who I was or what I was or what I was at. You know? Yeah, man, you know. Dex couldn't play no basketball, though. He used to get all, he used to be, he like when Arnold from Chester and South Philly and them, and Freddie Akins and them, they used to run ball in the gym on the days they had teams. Dex used to play forward and everything. He was just too big. You know what I mean, football probably was really his sport. But that basketball, you know what I'm saying? And one thing about basketball, man, I seen a lot of fights in that gym. You know, I used to be up in the bleachers watching them play ball. But then I would come down and go in the gym and lift weights with Daniel Vargas, Spanish ball, who brother was getting all that money, who brother was from 18th and Wallace eating. I was around all the Puerto Ricans. I'm telling you, all the Puerto Ricans, Nathan Butler and all of them. I used to be around all them dudes. And I used to be with Bulldogs. Bulldog cell was right next to me and Dex cell. And Weasel and Kev cell, Weasel from 11 Cumberland, his cell was near the shower. My cell was near his, me and Dex. And Bulldog, Daniel Vargas, Kingpin Boy, his brother, they was next door to me. You know what I mean? So we all used to be around each other. And, and all the Puerto Ricans, they, they respected me, man. Because they knew that not only because I was from North, I'm a likable person. Plus, I knew damn near all of them. You know what I mean? When you know Puerto Ricans and, and they know you know they peoples, and one thing about Puerto Ricans, they don't fuck with just anybody. You got to be a thorough motherfucker to be with them and around them. You feel me? But one thing I realized, Sage, his dad, Fifi, because Weezer and Fifi woke, worked together on center. And everybody was somebody in greatest for, they all hung together. You know what I mean? It wasn't no geographical thing in jail. If you thorough, you thorough. Boozer from 49 for Hoops, he was down there. Then Boozer was down to Ford. We was down Holmesburg together. And Boozer and Poo Poo, they was real tight on J Block. You know? And then my main man, little Butchie from down the bottom, they got caught up in that pharmacy homicide robbery over Brook Pharmacy homicide robbery, and they locked all them up. Yeah, and it was all my homies from the juvenile joints. See, all the young boys in Philly that was about that life, they all had to come to the youth study center. And who's the Wallace in the center? At my era, me and my twin brother, Malcolm South Philly. Before that was my brother, Say Cool, Bernie, Chester, Dickey. You know what I mean? That's from South Philly. You know what I mean? Other dudes that was from around. That was putting in work. You know what I mean? Jeff Gant. My brother Reg. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like my my stepbrother Coco. This one, the hikes was the hikes. I was going up the hikes in 82, 81, go visit Coco when he was up there. My dad used to take us on Sundays to go visit him. And then we'd go visit Sekou. Then I wound up being in that bitch. I ain't know my brother Reg was up in there when he was a young boy because I didn't know him at the time. I ain't meet my brother Reg until 88. But my dad used to always tell us about it. You feel me? We met my brother Reg when he was 15. We met Sabrina when he was like 12, 13. You feel me? So we went out there and found our family. And all my father kids, they family mothers, like all my... My brother Reg, my sister Sabrina, my sister Ebony, and my sister Latifah, all my father kids, all they families, all they mom sides of the family, love me and my brother Mike. You real shit. You know, that only goes to show you the human being that me and my brother was, man. Everybody loved us, man. Everybody on the internet loved me. Y'all see me walk through. North, and they like, what's up, Hawk? That one video I did, the one, the last one I did when I went, walked through North, y'all heard people saying my name. Hockey Raw! What's up, Hawk? Y'all gotta listen. Yeah! You know why? Everybody know my walk. Everybody know me, man. 
no enemies. I can go through Cumberland Street. I can go through Nard Street. I can go down Kensington. I can go all through South Philly, all up Southwest Frankfurt, all that. Believe that. Southwest know me. I was just really up Southwest like that not that long ago. The deli know me. Paxton Street know me. 54th Street, damn sure know me. And 58th Street. They know. When I was down there with Maine, man, I ain't going to say his name, but they know. They know how I was moving when I had these on. Come on, man. I wasn't one of them dudes that just be around somebody just to be around them. I was getting my feet wet every day. It's just that I had to realize that we lose it. You know what I mean? Think, look at the generation out here now. In 20 years, there's going to be another generation out here. And the generation that's out here now, 20 years from now, the one that's going to make it, it ain't going to get killed and go to jail. They're going to be trying to school the youngins 20 years from now. You don't see it now. I didn't see it. I was young, immature. My brain wasn't fully developed. This is why when young boy, they hear the message, but they ain't going to take heed to the message until they brain fully developed, until they old enough to really understand they the last one left. And they're going to see the young is acting wild. But they're going to say, young and I should do that. Young going to look at you, you went down. I don't know you. And it's going to be fucked up to you because anywhere I go, I tell a younger dad, but they don't know me. Because they weren't around in the 80s, in the 90s. They probably was born in the 90s and the 2000s. Think about it. The average young boys out here now, my homie Ego call them computer babies. No, who called no um Jeff Gant called them comp computer babies because this was the computer era. When the year 20, two, the year 2000 came. These all the young, the younger that's out in the streets now, they was born in 2000. They was born in 97, 98, 99, and 2000, right? Now, what about the ones who was out, grown in 2000, in the 90s and the 80s? They old heads now. So if you was born in between 1997 and the year 2000, 20 years from now, you're going to be in your 40s. And you're going to be an old head. And them young boys that's babies now, look at the young boys around you. Look how little they, they is right now. Every time I see a young boy like 5, 6 years old to 13 years old, you know what I said to myself? They next. They're going to be the ones. You know? But the same street corner you are on right now, somebody else had 20 years, 30 years, 40 years before you was even born. Before you start up, look at 13 from Oxford. That big shooting just happened around here. And the girl, the little eight year old girl, got um, skin, a, a bullet grazed her head, her face, right? I was out there. I told my mom to meet me there. She said, I want to meet you there. I said, Mom, why you always meet me on 13th and C's me more, but not on Oxford Street when Oxford Street is closer from where I'm coming from? She said, Because I don't know that neighborhood. You don't know about that neighborhood. Back in the day, you couldn't even stand on that corner. And that's when I made the old video back in the day of 12th and Oxford, 9th and Oxford, 13th and Oxford, the whole Oxford Street game, right? And the young boy walked across the street real fast with a hoodie on. He had these glasses on. He had like a camouflage orange hoodie on, looking all crazy, walking all fast. He walked and then he walked and I turned back and looked at him. He turned back and looked at me, but he was watching his body walk across the street real fast. But I'm watching him like, nigga, you, you back to... If you, if you step back and come off them steps, I'm going to air you the fuck out. That's how I'm thinking, because I got to watch my body. The next day or later on that day, it was a big-ass shootout. Right there. No bullshit. So my mom was right. A spider sense was on. You know why? Because my mom, damn near 75, 76 years old. So she was around. She was around when they used to be in gangs, when they were saying, I want a bucket of blood. When her sister, older sister, ran even diamond. When females ran gangs. Some of y'all great grandmoms and grandmoms was gangsters. Believe that. Believe that. Y'all look at these old ladies in Philly. That's in their 80s and 70s. A lot of them was part of gangs. 
Every neighborhood females was gang worn. Y'all gotta see that movie. Um, boy, what's the boy name, man? The Carson, the John about Carson. What his name was? Something Carson. The story of Johnny Carson, not Johnny Carson, is a, is a, um when they had the the laws and the and the Hawks. The story of Johnny Carson, uh, Sonny Carson. The, the the story of Sonny Carson, something like that. And you see how when they was marching before they would start gang one in the park, they had the band, they had females in the gangs with them and all that. Yeah. I was a young boy in elementary school in the 80s. Females could fight their ass off. And most of them could beat anybody in the school. They would put hands on you in the 70s too. Yeah, in the 70s, you get beat the fuck up by a female in school. Beat you the fuck up. Females will beat you the fuck up when they went to Vox, when they went to Reynolds, when they went to Blaine, when they went to Gideon. Yeah. When they went to Elvison, when they went to William Dick. Yeah, you know I mean, when they went to um Duckery. Yeah, when they went to Cook. Raymond, when they went to Rose School. Yeah. Try and tell you, I'm giving y'all, I'm giving y'all strictly history, you know. What's going on with them likes and them comments? Let me see what's going on. Yeah, the, yeah, the, the education of Sonny Carson. Yeah, me, uh, yeah, that, see that right there? Now, when that, when they was gang one, y'all seen females in that joint, right? And look how young they was. Look how young Sonny Carson was when he first started getting locked up. That's why only the old heads can believe I was that young in the streets because they was younger than me in the streets. Eight, nine years old in gangs and real gangs, smoking weed, smoking cigarettes. You know, the woman, she from Baltimore. You know what I mean? And her name, it might have been Billie Holiday, but she sung that song for Forbidden Fruit. You know what she started off doing? Back in the day, females used to sell a body. Young girls, 10, 11 years old, used to sell a body just to bring food in the house. That was a struggle back then. Y'all, see, y'all don't know the struggle a lot of our ancestors went through, man, to make it in this world, period. To make it in America. You feel me? Look how to do our Indian ancestors. You would think it'd be an Indian store in each corner. But you only they don't even talk about Indians no more. And this is their land. That's how diabolical they is. You understand what I'm saying? This whole America called Turtle Island was the Native American, my ancestors' land. Your ancestors' land. I know I got Blackfoot in, in, in me. I know my history. Is it Blackfoot or Cherokee? Or both? You feel what I'm saying? Know your heritage, man. Know where you come from. What do you say? What's going on? You ain't got no wrench. How you ain't got no wrench, baby? You been had a wrench. You must have, I don't know. I thought you had one before anybody had one. Family? My bad. You know I'll be on here forgetting this shit, man. You know, you don't even need a wrench, man. You know what I mean? Everybody know you the engine to this shit, baby. They don't know you the conductor of Philly trenches, man. They going to know. When we start doing this major, major, major movie shit, yeah, that's the ball. That's the ball of the Mandela numbers. Yeah, it's my family right there. That's Shaheed right there. David Smith, man. What the fuck is wrong with y'all, man? You know I love you, family. Yeah, you know I mean, you already know how we linked up. Matter of fact, I gotta show them this. I gotta show them something, man. I gotta show y'all who Shaheed is, man. I can't, I can't, I can't leave no stones unturned, man. You feel me? Even though I did a major video about you and Mom Dukes that time, but I'm about to show them something, man. I'm about to get right on this thing for you, bro. You hear me? I'm about to get right on this and show y'all my main man. Come on, I hate using this guy. I don't know what's wrong with my tablet. I get my, I got my own Wi-Fi from T-Mobile on here. This, this shot he right here, look at it. The 36 years Lumberg Finest, my main man. Yeah, you know I mean, Thurl. 
Yeah, I mean, Pharaoh, for real. You feel me? I'm trying to show them that picture with me and you together. They don't even know, man, that you. Here it go, here it go. Look at me and Shahid with the fully trenchy shit on at the Met at one of the shows. Yeah, I mean, you see us suited and booted. We got this. You know what's crazy? You know, we making the same face, man. <laughs> We think alike, man. Plus, he a genius, man. See, motherfuckers don't know. He a genius for real. You see what it say? Fully trenches, man. That's vice president right there, man. You see us at the motherfucking... I think I might have to see that thing in there. I might have a shoe on me right there. <laughs> but, but trust believe, I always get it in the mat, though. <laughs> I walk around the metal detectors. It's crazy how the whole security really know me. Really know me, know me. You feel me? Now, y'all mean you my family, man. Y'all mean? You know I show you much love. You family, man, you know? Yeah, the education of Johnny Cars, you damn sure right. Yeah, that, that, that only goes to show you that's the case of Johnny Carson, man. That's the hell. I wish a lot of these young boys watch them old gangster shows, man. He said, I remember seeing, he said, the nick, what he said, the nickel projects fall was going to furnace then. You talking about furnace school? He said, you he said you got the five movies worth of content on the channel. Hey, listen, but, but the thing is, that movie that I made a video about, it's one of my videos, when in the hallway, you remember the part when he first got out of jail, he got the juvenile joint, he said, I was up the joint with your man. He said, then he started talking that fly shit to him, then he went through the kangaroo line. See, y'all young boys got it easy, man. Back in the day when you had to join the gang, you had to go through a kangaroo line they had. They had sticks, rocks, chains, and you had to go through the kangaroo line and get fucked up. You know? Y'all know that movie called American Me? I mean, Blood In, Blood Out? The people who made that, that Mexican gang movie, they got killed behind that. Because you weren't supposed to let nobody know about those gang activities. People don't know that, man. You know? And to me, my honest opinion, and I'm not being racist, and I'm not being um, prejudiced, but my opinion, Mexican gang, to me, because of the cartel, because of how they really move, they, they the worst, they, they like the gang. Them right there, they, they don't play no game. See, Blood and Crips in LA, I ain't taking that from none of them gangs. But them essays, y'all already know how they move, man. Y'all already know how they move, man. Plus, they got, they got all the drugs. That's why they're the most powerful, the most dangerous one, because Mexican gangs, Mexican cartels, you might say they're the same thing. That's why they're the most powerful is one in my eyes. Yeah, you see blood and blood out. Boy, try to get out the game. What they do to him? They killed his ass. You don't hear about that in no other gangs. Or you want to get out. They just don't fuck with him no more. But in Mexican gangs, they kill your ass. Some Mexican gangs kill your whole family. Y'all already know. If you don't know, you know now. You feel me? Yeah, though. Hey, listen, y'all. I'm about to end this live, but I'm glad I'm back on, y'all. I love y'all. Stay tuned. I'm going to still come on tonight, though. I just had to make up for the last two days and give y'all some type of live. You know what I mean? Even though I walk through north, even though I'm going to be walking through the city this winter, this fall, you know what I mean? Letting y'all know. You know what I mean? Bringing y'all that content. You feel me? Exactly. Thanks for the love, LG. You feel me? Fully trenches, fully trenches, fully trenches. Peace.